welcome again to our uh, devotion and the title is uh, we are a work in progress that uh, God is working progressively in our lives now there is a book by uh, John Bunyan entitled the Pilgrim's Progress and it talks about the journey of Christian who was a uh, uh, rushing towards the celestial city because uh, of uh, what he read from the book of the coming destruction of uh, their city and uh, he was uh, thought mad by many but uh, he was uh, running away from uh, his own city going towards this uh, celestial city and uh, he was carrying a heavy uh, load heavy uh, baggage representing the heaviness of sin and this was removed only when he was uh, approaching or he approached the cross and uh, the heavy burden rolled down and he was freed he experienced battles and uh, uh, difficulties on the way representing the battles of the Christian life but then he was able to reach the city uh, at the end. And later on, he was followed by his uh, wife and children to that celestial uh, city, representing heaven or representing uh, uh, the coming of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, we are a work in progress because of Jesus. And uh, we have our past present and future states just like uh, the pilgrim's progress we are on a journey to heaven or we are waiting for the coming of uh, Jesus Christ now we have our pre-conversion state or our past pre-conversion state when we were not yet uh, believers in Jesus Christ we were not yet converted to our Christian faith that's uh, our past state or status according to our passage in Colossians uh, 1 21 once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviors so you can see here that once you were alienated from God that's the words of Paul to the Colossian believers that uh, their pre-conversion state was an alienation from God and uh, there were enemies uh, they had evil behaviors and that's also our state when we were not yet converted we were alienated from God or separated from God you can see here God and man and uh, we are spiritually uh, dead because of our sins now uh, Jesus as the firstborn of creation and uh, all creation also was made through him according to uh, our let's say in Colossians according to Colossians but humankind fell into sin, right? There's the perfect creation of uh, God uh, through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. But then, man fell. And so sin entered the world. And because of that, we call that the fall of uh, man. Uh, we are now separated from God. We are alienated from God. According to Archie Sproul, at the fall, we became alienated not only from God and other people, but also from ourselves. So you can see here the effect of uh, uh, the fall, alienation from God, but then alienation also from other people, and even from ourselves. Right? Now, there is another effect 
our world is broken because we're alienated from God, uh, from the God who made us. Right? There's a perfect creation, but we are alienated from God because the whole world was also affected because of the fall of man. And then in our passage, we were enemies of God in our minds. The point here is that we hate God in our minds because God is holy and we are sinful. Uh, God is uh, perfect. We are not. So we can see here the uh, not only the separation but according to our past enemies, we don't like God. We hate God. And the reason is because of our evil behavior. And in Isaiah 59, 2, we can read like this. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have he hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. So we can see here the sin separating us from God separating people from God is because of, we can see here, uh, sin or evil behavior. So that's our past state. And uh, praise the Lord, we have this, uh, praise our present Christian state, who we are now before God, before Jesus Christ. In the presence of God, in the presence of uh, Jesus Christ now, He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death. So we can uh, see that in Colossians 1, 22, in uh, the NIV version. But now, He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death. So we can see here the present state of uh, believers now we are reconciled we are reconciled now to god because of what christ has done we are reconciled with god through jesus death on the cross because of what christ has done on the cross he paid the penalty of our sins then we are now reconciled with god in uh, romans 5 9 10 since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? For if we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through His life? So we can see here the present salvation that... Uh, we have, we are experiencing because of what Christ has done reconciling us to God. So we are now uh, reconciled to God and we are saved now. And we will be saved from the wrath to come. We will experience the future salvation. But uh, that is the future. Now we are reconciled with God. You know, because of what Christ has done. We are we can now experience the peace. You know, just like uh, you know, we were enemies, but now we are at peace with uh, God. Now, here is a very good uh, uh, book by Richard uh, Rick, Don Richard Son, who was a Canadian missionary to uh, the present uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, in the earlier days, there was the tradition or the culture of uh, the people there of uh, uh, war against themselves. And uh, Don Richard's son was called by God to go there as a, a missionary. And uh, he was teaching about uh, Jesus Christ. But then, he was uh, uh, betrayed by uh, 
his friend uh, Judas and he was surprised because the people there instead of uh, praising Jesus Christ they were praising Judas because in their culture at that at that time to be a, a betrayer a traitor is good if you are a very good traitor you are good in the uh, tradition at that time so what they were doing is that they are trying to befriend somebody as if they are his friend and then they will invite that friend into their village and uh, feed that person in their village but then later on kill that person and eat that person and uh, because of that the other tribe will also devise a plan to befriend somebody there and then uh, kill and so we can see here the cycle of uh, killing the cycle of uh, war and uh, so if you are a very good uh, betrayer traitor um, then you are good in their tradition but that's actually evil you see they have lost their sense of uh, you know goodness you know that they are praising a bad person just like uh, Judas so Don Richardson said all right if you if that is the case uh, I'm going to leave I'm going to go to other area so he was uh, among the Saudi people at the time and uh, because of uh, that uh, the warring tribes decided to have a peace treaty and uh, Don Richardson observes how they from one tribe they give a baby born a newborn child to the uh, tribe another tribe and the other tribe will also give uh, a child to the other village and uh, they explained to Don Richardson like this as long as the baby lives among them there is peace so they call the child peace child but as long as they are uh, not treated badly and they are safe and they are alive there is peace among themselves and so Don Richardson realized that uh, this is an illustration of Jesus Christ as the peace child. So God gave Jesus Christ as a peace child. And because of that, we can have peace with God. We were enemies with God. But then, because of Jesus Christ, given by God to us then there is already peace between us and God himself hallelujah so because of that as Don Richardson continued to teach in that place many of them became believers of the Lord Jesus Christ yes we are a work in progress because of Jesus and Paul in Colossians explains that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation and he is the image of the invisible God. He is, uh, but then he was, the, he was born, uh, became human, and then uh, he died, but then he is the firstborn from among the dead. He is the head of the church. When he say firstborn of all creation, he was there before creation was made. Because he was the one, uh, through him, creation was made. And he is the firstborn from among the dead. Right? He resurrected. He rose from the dead. He's the first. And believers will follow in the future. Right? So, we have our past, present, and future states. Our perfect future state is also mentioned in our passage in Colossians 1 22 uh, b 
He has reconciled you to, uh, by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in His sight without blemish and free from accusation. So we can see here the future state of uh, believers like you and me. Holy in His sight. All right. When uh, we were justified, when uh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and God has given us this saving faith uh, because the Holy Spirit convicted us and we repented of our sins, then uh, we are justified. Meaning we are uh, declared righteous. We are declared holy. So our position before God is holy because of Jesus Christ. Jesus, a uh, God, looks Jesus Christ in us, right? So we can see here the holiness of uh, Jesus Christ in us. That's the positional uh, holiness we have. But then there is what we call the practical or experiential holiness wherein we grow. Not only positionally, but uh, we grow uh, every day, being sanctified, being made holy until we reach heaven. And we are now free from sin until Jesus Christ comes back and changes this uh, uh, everything, you know, and uh, judge Satan and his angels, his, the devils, and no more sin in this uh, world, right? So uh, we will experience in that day the perfect holiness, right? So we will be presented holy in God's sight. And without blemish, right? A bride without sin, a pure bride without blemish. Now, when Jesus Christ uh, will come back, that is what we call the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb with the church, with the bride, right? We are the bride. We are being ready, holy people of God before uh, that uh, wedding day. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be married to Christ, with Christ, when Jesus Christ will come back. And so on that day, we will be without blemish and free from accusation. In this time, there is what we call the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself and the devils, you know. Uh, there is the, uh, we are being accused even though we are already a holy positionally, we are justified, but then Satan will come, you know, and accuse us. But during that day, when Jesus Christ will come, no more accusation. When we reach heaven, when we die and we go to heaven, no more accusation. So, when we a Christian dies, he goes to heaven with God. His body will be decayed here on earth. Now, when Jesus Christ will come back, the dead, you know, the soul and the body will reunite and it will be called the glorified body. It will be changed. Those who are living, immediately, they will be changed into glorified body when Jesus Christ will come back. And this will be the new heaven, we will be changed into new heaven and new earth. No more sin. No more uh, Satan. No more devil in that day. That's the future perfect state of believers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Meanwhile, we can say, please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet sometimes my character may not be perfect I may have some flaws I'm not as handsome as I should be but please be patient God is changing me from glory to glory hallelujah and in that day even I'll be the best you know, I will look handsome, more handsome. And you will be 
more handsome also in that day when Jesus Christ will come. More beautiful on that day. In this world, we accept imperfections, flows, and even Christians we have. But God is not yet finished with me. I am still a work in progress. Even in my knowledge, in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, so in part I know, but then I shall know, even as also I am known, even fully known. Right? So we can see here that even our knowledge, uh, there's limitation. There are many things that we could not understand, even in the Christian life, even in the Word of God. There are mysteries that we could hardly understand even in our time. Hallelujah. But then, we will know. Now, even uh, in this uh, daily bread, the greatest mystery and this is talking about the nature of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God. He is perfect God and perfect human. How can that be? We accept that by faith. We believe as revealed in the Word of God. Even other mysteries like the Trinity, we could hardly perfectly understand. We have our limitations as human beings but if, even then we move on and so we ask this uh, the in this devotion in this uh, daily bread we are asked when have you wrestled with your understanding of Jesus what was the result many more but we will understand better in the future hallelujah let us pray Lord, thank you that we are a work in progress. Thank you that you have revealed yourself to us and you have reconciled us to yourself through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love and concern to us because of what you have done. We are not alienated from you anymore but we are reconciled with you. And we can experience that peace. And so we pray for a continuous peace to reign in our hearts and to reign in our community, to reign in our nation. That's our prayer. We may not experience the perfect peace in this world, but we pray that somewhat we will experience your peace not only in ourselves, but in this world of fact. That heaven will come to earth. We will experience you. Your peace, your love. Thank you for the hope of the future also. We are looking forward to our perfect state in the future. Meanwhile, we continue to ask for your guidance and protection to all of us all of this for your glory and for the good of many and so we, we ask for your special favor to them to all of us for the glory of your name in jesus name amen